First Kings 18 Elia proved he is the Lord Prophet. For three years no rain fell in Samaria and there was almost nothing to eat anywhere. The Lord said to Elia, Go and meet with King Ahab. I will soon make it rain. So Elia went to see Ahab. At that time, Abadia was in charge of Ahab's place, palace. But he faithfully worshipped the Lord. In fact, when Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord prophet, Abadiana hid 100 of them in two caves and gave them food and water. Ahab sent for Abadia and said, We have to find something for our horses and mules to eat. If we don't, we will have to kill them. Let's look around every creek and spring in the country for some glass. You go one day, one way, and I will go the other. Then they left in separate directions. As Abadia was walking alone, he met Elia. Abadia recognized him. Bow down and ask, Elia, is it really you? Yes, go tell Ahab I'm here. Abadia replied, King Ahab would kill me if I told him that, and I haven't even done anything wrong. I swear to you in the name of the living Lord, your God, that the king has looked everywhere for you. He sent people to look in every country and when they couldn't find you, he made the leader of each country swear that you were not in that country. Do you really want me to tell him you are here? What if the Lord the Spirit takes you away as soon as I leave? When Ahab comes to get you, I won't find you. Then he will surely kill me. I have worshipped the Lord since I was a boy. I even hide 100 of the Lord prophets in caves when Jezebel was trying to kill them. I also gave them food and water. Do you really want me to tell Ahab you are here? He will kill me. Elia said, I am a servant of the living Lord, all-powerful, and I swear in his name that I will meet with Ahab today. Abadia left and told Ahab where to find Elia. Ahab went to meet Elia, and when he saw him, Ahab shouted, There you are, the biggest troublemaker in Israel. Elia answered, You are the troublemaker, not me. You and your family have Disobey the Lord's command by worshiping Baal. Call together everyone from Israel to meet me on Mount Camel. Be sure to bring along the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat the Isabel's table. I have got everyone together. Then they went to meet Elia on Mount Camel. 
Elias stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you try to have things pass away? If the Lord is God, worship Him. But if Baal is God, worship Him. The people did not say a word. Then Elia continued, I am the Lord only prophet, but Baal has 450 prophets. Bring us two bulls. Baal's prophets can take one of them, kill it, and cut it into pieces. Then they can put the meat on the wood without lightening the fire. I will do the same thing with the other bow, and I won't light a fire under it either. The prophets of Baal will pray to their God, and I will pray to the Lord. The one who answers by starting the fire is God. That's a good idea, everyone agreed. Elia said to Baal's Baal's prophet, There are more of you, so you go first, pick out a bow and get it ready. But don't light the fire. Then pray to your God. They choose their bow. Then they got it ready and prayed to bow all morning, asking him to start the fire. They danced around the altar and shouted, Answer us, bow. But there was no answer. And noon, Elia began making fun of them. Pray louder, he said. Bar must be a god. Maybe he's daydreaming or using the toilet or traveling somewhere. Or maybe he's asleep and you have to make him up. The prophet kept shouting louder and louder and they cut themselves with swords and knives until they were bleeding. This was the way they worshipped and they kept it up until time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no answer of any kind. Arya told everyone to get gather around him while he repaired the Lord altar. Then he used twelve stones to build an altar in honor of the Lord. Each stone stood for one of the tribes of Israel, which was the name of name the Lord had given to their ancestor Jacob. Elia dug each around the altar large enough to hold about 14 liters. He placed the wood on the altar. Then they cut the bow into pieces and laid the meat on the wood. He told the people, fill four large jars with water and pour it over the meat and the wood. After they did this, he told them to do it two more times. They did exactly as he said, until finally the water ran down the altar and filled the ditch. When it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elia played, Our Lord, you are the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Now, Prove that you are the God of this nation and that I, your servant, have done this at your command. Please answer me, so these people will know that you are the Lord God, and that you will turn their hearts back to you. The Lord immediately sent the fire, and it burned up the 
sacrifice the wood and the stones it scorched the round ground everywhere around the altar and dried up every drop of water in the ditch when the crowd saw the so what had happened they all bowed down and shouted the lord is god the lord is god just then elia said grab the prophets of baal don't let any of them get away so the people captured the prophets and took them to kishon river where elia killed everyone one of it one of them it starts train Elia told Ahab get something to eat and drink I hear a heavy rain coming Ahab left but Elia climbed back to the top of Mount Camel then he stood down with his face almost to the ground and said to his servant look toward the sea the servant left and when he came back he said I looked but I didn't see anything Elia told him to look seven more times after the seventh time the servant replied I see a small cloud coming this way but it's no bigger than a fist Elia told him tell Ahab to get his chariot ready and start home now otherwise the rain will stop him a few minutes later it got very cloudy and windy and rain started pouring down so Elia wrapped his coat around himself and the Lord gave him strength to run all the way to Jezreel. Ahab followed in his chariot. Elia runs away from Ahab and Jezebel. Isabel. Ahab told his wife Isabel what Elia had done and that he had killed the prophet he, she sent a message to Elia you killed my prophet now I'm going to kill you I pray that the gods will punish me even more severely if I don't do it by this time tomorrow Elia was afraid when he got her message and he ran to the town of Beersheba in Judah. He left his servant there, then walked around, walked on the whole day into the desert. Finally, he came to a large bush and sat down in its shade. He begged the Lord, I've had enough, just let me die. I'm not better off than my ancestors. Then he lay down in the shade and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel woke him up and said, Get up and sit, eat. Ariel looked around and by his head was a jar of water and some baked bread. He sat up, ate and drank, then lay down and went back to sleep. Soon the Lord Angel woke him again and said, Get up and eat or else you will get too tired to travel. So Elia sat up and ate and drank. The food and water made him strong enough to work forty more days. At last, he reached Mount Sinai, the Mount of God, and he sent the night there in a cave. 
the road appears to Elia. While Elia was on Mount Sinai, the Lord asked Elia, Why are you here? He answered, Root God or powerful, I will always done my best to obey you, but your people have broken their solemn promise to you. They have torn down your altars and killed all your prophets except me, and now they are even trying to kill me. Go out and stand on the mountain, the Lord replied. I want you to be there when I pass you by. All, all at once, a strong wind shook the mountain and shattered the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. Next, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Then there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Finally, there was a gentle breeze, and when Elia heard it, he covered his face with his coat. He went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. A voice asked, Elia, why are you here? Elia answered, Lord God, O powerful, I've always done my best to obey you, but your people have broken their sermon promise to you. They have torn down your altars and killed all your prophets except me, and now they are even trying to kill me. The Lord said, Elia, you can go back to the desert near Damascus, and when you get there, appoint Hazael to be king of Syria. Then appoint Je Jehu, son of Nimsi, to be king of Israel, and Elisa, son of Shaphat, to take their places my prophet Bazel will start killing the people who worship Baal. Jehu will kill those who escape from Bazel. And Elisa will kill those who escape from Je Jehu. But seven thousand Israelites have refused to worship Baal and they will live. Elisa becomes Elia's assistant. Elia left and found Elisa plowing a field with a pair of oxen. There were eleven other men in front of him and each one was also plowing with a pair of oxen. Elia went over and put his own coat on Elisa. Elisa stopped plowing and ran after him. Let me kiss my parents goodbye, then I will go with you, he said. You can go, Elia said. But remember what I've done for you. Elisa left and took his oxen with him. He killed them and boiled them over a fire he had made with the wood from his plow. He gave them meat to the people who were with him and they ate it. Then he left with Elia and became his assistant.